I finally finished work on the welded intake manifold for my Mark IV Volkswagen Jetta VR6 12 valve wagon. And um, before I threw this thing away, I wanted to I wanted to see how it worked. This is the original upper intake manifold, and it contains the variable geometry system that I was deleting. Uh, first, a little explanation of why I'm deleting it. <coughs> this is the this is the barrel valve. I think I think most people call it the intake flap, but to me, it's like a barrel valve on a like a motorcycle carburetor, racing carburetor. So. This is this is all the service parts here. Well, almost. Um, at the end of this, there's that surface there, which is for which rides in a bushing that's down at the end of this. You can barely see it. So um, it rides in that bushing. There's another bushing over here. There's the diaphragm. Diaphragm. There's this little arm that I guess sometimes breaks. And then the flap valve itself is able to fail, uh, or not. It it's not the flap valve's fault. The bushings go, and the bushings, uh, and then this flap valve rattles around in there and it gets beaten up, and then sometimes it has to be replaced. So there's the flap valve, two bushings, the diaphragm, and this arm, and these are all parts that uh, that will periodically require service. Um, so I just, I don't like the idea of intake manifolds requiring service. So I, uh, I decided to take a Mark III intake manifold and build that. So um, now I have a, I'm basically backdating my, my Mark IV to Mark III spec because I'm also putting a cam in it that was intended for a Mark III. I'm putting an Autotech 262 cam in it. Figured I might as well try to give myself a little bump while I'm at this. So um, these are the these are the parts that can fail, and that's the reason I replaced it. Really, I just want something that's durable. Uh, I don't want to I don't want to deal with any more service than I have to. Life is full enough. I have enough projects. I don't want my intake manifold being another project other than you know that one. Okay. So this is right now. This is low RPM position. Um, I already pried the pried and broke the the lid off of this plenum here because I was curious. <laughs> yeah. So um, this is the low RPM position right now, and in this position, let's take this cylinder. This would be number six, right? Yeah, number six. So. Um, at low RPM, the exclusive intake track for this is uh, is from the from the plenum down this runner, around this curve, down through the the lower intake, and then into the cylinder into the cylinder head port. Um, that's the that's the low RPM. At four thousand RPM, it um, this system flips this valve open like this. And when this valve is opened, the intake ports gain access to a second uh, to a second plenum. So this becomes a second plenum. It doesn't. It's not actually replacing this plenum because this plenum and these runners are still the the way this plenum gets the it gets its air. But um, whereas when when this flap is closed like this. This is number six, this is number five, this is number four, this is number three, this is number two, this is number one. And those ports get the air that flows through those runners, period, end of story. Um, when this opens, all these runners are working together in concert to feed this plenum. And, with, and then the air that's in this plenum is drawn through these now shorter runners down into the lower, down into the, down into the intake port. So that's how the system works. Um, these would become a, a high RPM restriction. So <clears throat> at 4,000 RPM, this thing flips open, and uh, and you get these shorter 
runners that are also larger. So uh, that's the way it works. Uh, pretty clever. I mean, it uh, it works. It does its job. Um, when everything is right, the bushings aren't bad, and the didn't tear up the flap valve, and the diaphragm's okay, and all the vacuum lines are good, and everything else, um, it works pretty well, I guess. But uh, I've never actually driven a car that had that system working well. Uh, when I bought this, it was all something was going on in here. I don't know. I don't know what. There was a lot of rotten vacuum lines, so it might have just been vacuum lines. I don't know. But um, I decided to uh, decided to put my car back to basically backward to Mark III specs by building this plenum. So I built a fixture off of the original intake that locates the um, that located the uh, the spatial relationship between the throttle body flange and the and the cylinder head, and then used that to to build this. I bolted the usable portion of a Mark III upper or Mark III upper and lower intake into this into the um, jig, and then I built uh, built this plenum, which positions the throttle body in the Mark IV location. That way, if I don't want to, I don't have to deal with um, I don't have to deal with uh, uh, aftermarket intake or, or making my own intake, whatever. I don't have to deal with any of that. I didn't want to try to put an intake, like I didn't want to try to use the Mark III intake as it was because the Mark III as, intake as it was brings the airflow meter over to the right fender and that space is being occupied by the uh, coolant tank on the Mark IV. So I didn't want it to become a massive like in-car project. I'd rather have it an on-bench project. So um, I built this and uh, stirred up a little bit of controversy because a lot of people say you're going to lose torque. Um, it is possible. Uh, it's possible that I'll lose torque. But I looked the numbers up. It's eight foot-pounds, stock versus stock. It's eight foot-pounds uh, and 1,000 RPM. So it's... Uh, Hundred and seventy, hundred and eighty. Oh, I forget. Who cares? It's eight. It's eight foot pounds, and the difference is forty-two hundred RPM peak on the Mark III and thirty-two hundred RPM peak on the Mark IV. To me, that's something that can be made up with a camshaft, and you can delete the system. So, um, I'm I'm anticipating overall an improvement in performance from what I had before, but not really doing this for the sake of performance, but more just for simplicity and dur durabil durability. So um, Autotech cams, uh, I massage the, the runners in the upper and the lower. I didn't, didn't actually reshape these. I just corrected them. There was some fairly crude machining, not crude, but the machining that was done was purely to roughly match the gaskets. It was not done for, uh, for with flow in mind. So the way they the, the way they machined the castings left a lot to be desired. So I just smoothed it all out. Uh, nothing really big. Um, did the same thing in here, basically gasket matching and, and, and smoothing what I could. Um, a lot of this is out of reach for anything but ex extrude hone. Uh, so I, I did what I could there. Uh, yeah. So when this, um, when I was welding this, there was a piece of uh, stainless steel wire, TIG wire, that was on the table. And when I was uh, positioning this, the, this runner was sitting on top of that piece of wire. So all the welding current while I was, wh whatever I was welding, all the current was, or at least a good share of it, was going through that piece of wire, which superheated the wire, which burned a spot in the intake. So I figured I'll just own it. Um, I did not want to try to sand all these and polish them and do all that because, well, because it's been done and because I just don't feel like it. Um, so I decided to fill in the, the, 
uh, the scar. So I sanded this all off. I filled it in. I thought, well, you know, now that those are mismatched, I might as well do something. So there's my little Frankenstein scar for the Franken take. Anyway, there it is. That's that's how the that's how that system works, and my reasoning for replacing it with a with a basically with a Mark III modified Mark III intake.